Welcome back and well done to our team, the Espresso Rebels, making it through to the quarterfinals. Impressive stuff. They absolutely loved it. To the ladies, thank you so much. We had a blast. Now, you might have noticed some strange things happening along our coastline yesterday. Having maritime accidents is unfortunately a reality for countries with coastlines. And we certainly do fit into that bracket here in Cape Town. In 1966, the SA Seafarer ran aground with 68 crew members and 12 passengers who were brought to safety by helicopters of 17 squadron from AFP. Now, yesterday, a training exercise, and I repeat, a training exercise, um, revisiting a similar scenario, tested the response of our emergency services here in Cape Town. And we have the head of Disaster Risk Management Centre here in the Cape to talk us through the motivation behind such an exercise. Mr. Greg Pillay, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I could see the hair rising on the back of your neck looking at Grant's city and his lack of disaster risk management. But clearly here in Cape Town, we are well looked after. Um, let, let's talk about um, the exercise yesterday. Why the need to reenact? this this um, famous day or infamous day in Cape Town's history? Well, it wasn't intentional in actual fact to reenact that event. Uh, it was more for, because of the need. You know, Cape Town has a large coastline. It's 309 kilometers. It stretches sure. right from uh, Malkbos Strand in the north, in the Atlantic Ocean, around the peninsula. And then the, it includes the Falls Bay coast as far as Gordon's Bay. So it's an extensive coastline. And we've just become concerned there has been an increase in cruise liners uh, you know, that are traversing through our coastline. And, the, you know, it could basically become a reality, you know, that one could be faced with this, this challenge. I think it also needs to be said we call the Cape of Storms, and particularly <laughs> in winter, we quite have, you know, and we have got quite a rocky coastline. You on a day like today where the wind is blowing That's like this, so you can understand so, how things can you know, go south, It don't? can be treacherous, and I think it's just fitting that we undertook an exercise and we got all the various services to collaborate. That's, that's the key word here, collaboration. Operation Beachy obviously brings together a lot of our emergency services, a lot of key components. Talk to us about the nature of those collaborations. How do we bring it all together? Well, it's actually our mandate. The Disaster Management uh, Act 57 of 2002 indicates that uh, the Disaster Management Center as such should in actual fact get together the various role players to prepare to, uh, re to react in, in times of emergency. How so, difficult is that? <laughs> well, I can just say to you, even this very exercise took us four months of planning. Wow. And there are 23 role players that have, that, that, uh, that have participated. And, uh, you know, getting it all together and getting everybody to understand their role and responsibility uh, is, is quite a challenge. So uh, it's a lot of preparation to be able to react on, a, on a, the, the turn of a, a shoe. You've got to be prepared for these things. Are you happy with the, the results? Was it yes, a success? Uh, I think it's a situation of practice makes perfect. And certainly, you know, you need to exercise it for, because the exercises give you an opportunity in the actual fact to review how you have reacted. And you certainly can improve on, on it. But I was very happy with, with the way it went. I think by far we have reached our objectives. Right. And those objectives were just namely interaction, inter, uh, interactive agency uh, collaboration. That was certainly it. We saw that and people could identify their roles and responsibilities. And lastly, it provided us a training opportunity. And uh, so it, it places you in a situation of readiness. So should we, in actual fact, be dealing with you know, the real thing, uh, you know, then you can fall back on that as, as practice. Can you take us through the scenario? What, what exactly played out? How, how did it all unfold? We played out uh, a scenario where we had a cruise liner that ran aground. Uh, I think we had an added dimension where the captain took ill and uh, we he didn't turn tail, tuck his no, no. tail between his legs and run off. No, the no, 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 no. <laughs> but it, it was a situation where the engine room, uh, you know, took, uh, took fire. And as a result of that, the fire had to be extinguished. And of course, it lost power and it, it, it ran aground. That was basically it. We were very fortunate. Uh, we were, were able to get the South African Navy uh, to donate as such a, a vessel, as oh, a frigate. Great. And they used that to simulate the cruise liner. And we were also managed to get on board the 106 passengers that we sourced by taking from the Disaster Management Center, volunteers. And we had volunteers also from the National Sea Rescue Institute, uh, as well as uh, I think there were 30 naval cadets cad cad uh, from the SA Navy. Well, that's a great way for them to get their head into the, the workspace, see how it all unfolds as well. Yeah, that was, that was certainly it. But that was the scenario. And uh, the NSRI, of course, responded to it through the port captain's office. Uh, and uh, some of them, some of the, 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 the people who were not injured, the passengers, were then removed via the SRI boats. I think what we need to just keep in mind, in a real situation like this, a mayday call will go out, 
and all you know, vessels in the area will be asked to respond. We didn't enact that yesterday, but that would be the situation. Then we had a situation, of course, where we had people that were more seriously injured, and in this instance, we made use of the South African Air Force uh, helicopters, uh, as well as the uh, Metro EMS service, so that they could, in actual fact, Kazavak, uh, the more seriously injured. I think there were 35, that was playing out, sure. 35. So 63 were, in actual fact, transported via boat to the harbour, and uh, 35 were in Kazavak. Yeah. So there were quite a few sorties then flown by the choppers, you know, uh, offloading them at Muli Point Lighthouse, and then f they were then triaged there, and from there they were taken further uh, to the Maskey Centre, the Cape Town Stadium. And that was also an interesting uh, situation. Part of the exercise was to include the Cape Town Stadium and to, test, and to <laughs> test it in actual fact uh, for its purpose as a mass care centre. So this was also part of the, of the wow, exercise. Wow, man, what an unbelievable uh, collaboration, I think, more than anything else. If I'm now walking along the promenade and I see a ship that I think is in distress, what do I do? Who do I call? My advice to them is call the port authorities, NSRI for that matter, uh, or the police, uh, 101 triple one or the uh, public emergency call center in Cape Town, it's 107, uh, from a landline. Uh, from a cell phone, it is 480-7700. All right, and we'll have that, that number on our website as well. Um, Greg, thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. this morning. Congratulations, it sounds like yesterday was a huge success. Uh, thank you very much. That was Greg Pillay, the head of Dis Disaster Risk Management Center here in the Cape, proving that we are ready to handle the big disasters should they hit our coastline. What an impressive thing to see. If you didn't see it yesterday, really did blow the mind. Um, but great to see our emergency services in full swing. Now, I think this day needs a bit of loosening up, maybe a little bit of dancing. What do you think, Kat? 